Coach Hazel is joined today by sophomore tight end Kyle Payton and junior guard Pat McShane. Well, it was a uh, it was good to come out of the locker room the way we did the other day on uh, the day after Thanksgiving and play a very good Ohio team that was a little bit beat up coming into the game. But uh, I thought our kids played extremely well in the first quarter defensively. We got some key stops and some key turnovers to really seize the momentum of that football game pretty early. Um, we struggled a little bit offensively at times. I thought we didn't uh, do it as good as as well as we could have done blocking second level defenders but uh, I thought when we had to you know move the move the ball a little bit we did a decent job and you like to perform a little bit better but I thought all in all I thought our special teams played exceptionally well except for maybe a mishandled punt or we should have we should have been able to get to one or two of those other punts. And it was a tough one because of the sun. And also, it was a little bit breezy outside. And I told him if he had any issues with handling those things to get away from it. So there was a couple of those we didn't handle as well as we should have. But uh, another good victory for the Flashes. And we look forward to playing a, a great football team on uh, Friday night. Coach, can you talk about um, looking ahead to this game and ultimately the bowl game? Um, you know, one step at a time, of course, but so much chatter out there already about the possibility of a BCS Bowl, and I think Kent State's played in Tangerine Bowl and the Refrigerator Bowl from 54 and 72, so how would the possibility of an Orange Bowl stack up? Yeah, I won't talk about that at all. I'll talk about Northern Illinois. That's the most important thing, and if uh, our guys don't focus for this game this Friday, and we have no opportunities to play in some of those big games, but uh, this is a Huge, huge game for this university. Um, very good football team we're playing. Just got finished watching the quarterback run around, and he's a quite a player. Creates all kinds of plays all over the field. Uh, but this is going to be a great challenge for us. There's two good football teams that are, that are going to be on the football field, and it'll be one of those games where it comes down the last couple minutes of the football game. Coach, can you just talk more about a uh... Lynch, you're saying he's a very talented player. Uh, your corners have uh, struggled at times, but usually it's the middle of the defense and the defensive lineup steps up. How are you preparing your corners for a Lynch? Well, I think when you play a guy like that who pulls it down and scrambles around, that you got to stay in coverage. If you're in man coverage, you have to stay in coverage, and you have to have tremendous eye discipline when you're playing a guy against a guy that can create so much. So uh, we have to be extremely disciplined in the back end with our eyes. Even though you can't talk about the bowl, can you? Do you feel the excitement around campus or anything? Just about all this kind of the buzz that's created here? Oh, absolutely. The, I mean, when you run off ten games the way we have and um, playing as well as we are right now, I think there's excitement not only here on campus but through the community, through Northeastern Ohio, and. Uh, even across uh, across the country, you're getting emails from people all over the country that uh, are just so elated with the success that the, the football program's having right now. Tell me about the guy with the tooth. I got an email today from a guy, I think he was from Florida, that uh, his dentist put a, uh, a K on his crown of his tooth. <laughs> He's a Kent State graduate. So. As far as it doesn't have bling, too, yeah. but we've got that. <laughs> <laughs> How much of the credit needs to go to you? I mean, this is quite a turnaround. Your first year as, as, as coach here, and uh, I'm sure you're going to be modest, but you know. Well, you know, it's about everybody, and it, everybody has their part and their role to to, uh, to uphold. And from the players to the trainers to the equipment people, we all have a role to do, and uh, it's uh, everyone's done their job extremely well. Coach, you've been an assistant from like wide receivers coach to running backs coach to kick returners coach, and we've seen Dre do well on the kick returns. We've seen Durham and Dre come out as a running backs. Now Eddie Emmy's finally stepping in as a top receiver. How does taking all those past assistant coaching jobs have helped you mold into one as the head coach now? Well, I think you're, every day is a learning experience, and uh, if I can share any of that knowledge with some of the assistants to help those guys get better, I think that's how I can contribute. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite things to do as one of the assistant coaches was a kickoff return. That was uh, something I put a lot of pride into. Uh, so Coach uh, Jemison and I talk quite a bit about the schemes that we'll run. And obviously, you know, I've coached uh, the running backs and the, the wide outs. So anytime I can help those guys uh, in their rooms, I can, I'll, I'll lend a hand. Pat, talk a little bit about 
you just kind of stepped on the bus while it was moving a little bit. <laughs> and what it's been like for you, particularly transitioning from Indiana to here. I mean, that's got to be really something. Yeah, I'm just, you know, um, I'm, I'm really lucky to, you know, be a part of this group and these coaches and, you know, everyone works, works really hard and um, it's, you know, it's fun. Everyone comes to work every day trying to outwork each other and um, it's really special to be a part of that and I'm very thankful. Do you look at all ahead, I mean, to the possibility of greater things for the, for the program in general? I know there's a sensitive issue about looking to the BCS, but... Obviously, you can't ignore it. It's an elephant in the room. I mean, people are talking about it, the whole BCS possibility for this team. Yeah, um, I mean, we know about it, but our goal since day one has been to win a MAC championship, and that's how we're approaching it right now. And um, if we do that, then, you know, it's in its, own, it's in its own hands. So our goal right now is to win a MAC championship. So. What's different about being around the Kent State program versus being around the Indiana program? Just in terms of what you're going through now, um, I feel like the the team is a lot tighter, and you know, there's a great relationship between the coaches and the players, and everyone is having a lot of fun, and um, the work ethic is, you know, awesome. Everyone comes to work every day, um, so um, that's the main difference. Did it surprise you that the work ethic might be that level here? Um, I mean, well, you know, everyone works hard, but it's, you know, the unity of the team and everyone, you know, everyone trying to compete, you know, so it's just, you know, so that's the, you know, main difference. Where do you think the unity came from? Um, well, when I first got here, everyone was so welcoming and, you know, treated me like a family member right when I got here. So I was here for a few weeks in the summer and, you know, everyone really had open arms and um, was you know, really nice, and I made a lot of friends in the summer, and now we're, you know, really tight, and, you know, it's awesome, so. You talk about competition. You guys do a lot of ones-on-ones? Every day we'll do two periods of ones versus ones, and it's only a five-minute period, so you don't beat each other up, but uh, it's very competitive. Can you talk to that? Yeah, we, uh, we do one-on-one, uh, -on -one, like, you know, pass drills every day in practice, and you know, our defensive line is really good, so it's, you know, and we have a pretty decent O-line, so it, you know, it makes everyone better, so, and everyone's working so hard in those drills, trying to beat each other, and, you know, when, when that happens, you know, there's going to be a great outcome. You took the team in preseason to Oakland for the idea of playing somewhere different, but knowing that you're going to be on the road a ton. How much of a difference is it going to be in a championship game where Northern's been there in the past couple of years? And does that give them a familiarity that you guys might not have? Or do you think what you did in terms of thinking we're a road team kind of makes up for some of that? That's a great, great point. I, I don't know if they're going to have an advantage or disadvantage from playing there for three straight years or not. Um, all I know that our football team this year has been extremely mature when we uh, jumped on the bus. And our preparation has been almost flawless in terms of uh, understanding all the things that go into winning a football game, a tough football game on the road. Uh, and hopefully we can continue that one more time here. Either one of you guys gotten any funny emails or texts from friends or anything? <clears throat> I get texts all the time from, from people I haven't talked to and a few years to people I talk to every day just about um, how great we're doing and stuff. And it's just like uh, Coach Hazel says and uh, the tight ends coach, Coach Michael says, it's ground zero every week. So um, you take it, you, you, you appreciate it. I appreciate it hearing from my friends and family and stuff. But like, like I said, it's ground zero every week. We got to get back to Monday and uh, Tuesday practice like, like, like we haven't been there yet and we're not there yet. So who's the like? Longest person you hadn't heard from in years? Anybody like a coach or? Um, I can't really can't really think of anybody. Uh, a friend of mine, um, his name's Eric. He texted me. I haven't talked to him since elementary school. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> since about fifth grade. He, I I didn't remember who it was at first. He said he said it's Eric. You're from from fifth grade class. I was like. Oh, <laughs> I didn't remember who he was. I had to look him up on Facebook. But then he's like, I see you guys are doing great. So I thanked Before him. Texting and Facebook was around, right? 
Right. <laughs> right. Can you weigh in on this whole thing about the BCS is, or the MAC is hearing from the Orange Bowl that they are going to send representatives to uh, to this game and the possibility exists that you could go to a BCS game? Uh, just the fact that that's out there, how does that make you feel and what are you thinking about that? It's, it's incredible because um, coming in, I was recruited by the last staff, coming in um, with the last staff and um, not, we didn't, I, everybody looks forward to a MAC championship and a big bowl game, but it's incredible to know there's a possibility, but like like they said, it's it's one step at a time. We've got to worry about the MAC championship before we worry about anything else. Coach, how do you handle all of these distractions? It's the first MAC football championship. Uh, then coaches are getting let go. Your name's getting popped up for a lot of coaching jobs. And then the, then yesterday, ranked 17. Now let's talk about BCS. How do you handle all these distractions at once? I have a routine that I go through every week, and it doesn't change. The ritual doesn't change. Um, I spend my Sundays watching special teams uh, behind closed doors by myself with a clicker in my hand, uh, and I go through the process there. I go on Mondays, and I watch offense and defensive films, and there's so many things that I have to get done before I feel, start to feel comfortable, and I'm not comfortable yet, uh, so I have, to, I have to block those other things out. Um, versus Army, you had, like, the jury pass, and versus Bowling Green, you had Terry Hewn with the – Big punt. You got a couple of those plays ready for uh, Northern Illinois? Not sure. Yet. <laughs> you talked about their uh, offense a little bit. Can you flip over? Yeah. yeah, their defensive ends are really good. Uh, they come off the edge and they create all kinds of issues. Uh, we're going to have to, uh, you know, so find a way to slow those guys down, especially number 90. I think he's explosive, quick, has great body lean, and. Uh, I think they're solid everywhere else, but I think he's an impact player. I think they do a good job. They're very simplistic defensively, uh, but they do a good job of putting pressure on you. Uh, so we're going to have to do a good job of kind of slow those guys down and take what we can get in our three or four or five yard gains and try to move the ball down the field that way. Um, I like where we are special teams wise. I think they do an they're, they're very similar to us. I think they're very similar to Bowling Green special teams wise in terms of high energy, guys in the right, in the correct lanes. Uh, so it's going to be a very balanced matchup on special teams. I don't, I don't know if the, there's an advantage one way or the other. Uh, our punter's probably a little bit better. Leg strength, their punter's very consistent though. Talk a little bit about you know when you've got a guy that can throw and can move the way that he can. You know, is there anybody that he looks like that you can look to to say how we defended this guy this way, or is he kind of just in his own category? I think he's he's different than every guy we played this year for sure. He's because he's so quick and he wants to run the ball. He absolutely wants to run it. Where a lot of quarterbacks don't want to run it, he wants to run the ball, and he's tough. I mean, he hits it, he hits it between the. The A and the B gap hard. There's some really good quarterbacks in the league. I mean, is he the top? I think he's probably the mo the most complete. There's guys that th probably throw it a lot better, um, but he can do both so well. And he's smart. You can see him smart. He he gets wrapped up with a guy and he throws the ball away. Doesn't take a eight yard loss. You, you can see the, it's his intelligence. Did you have a scary moment during the game, everyone? held their breath. He did come back into the game. Is he going to be ready to go? And is he 100%? Uh, today he's not 100%, but by uh, Friday he'll be very close to 100%. We practiced last night for about an hour and a half, and we held him out. We'll probably hold him out a little bit tomorrow. But uh, come Friday night, he'll be ready to go. Where's Trey on that with well? He's very I thought he was a little bit slower last weekend than he had been in the previous weeks. and. Uh, had to get a little bit better feel, get back into this the swing of it a little bit. But he had a good practice last night. So, oh yeah, yeah, he looked good last night. We've probably been talking about Wolf for a while, but just the fact that he's playing with this arm thing. I mean, is he kind of epitomized kind of what a lot of guys do here, or what? I mean, what can you say about that? Well, I think that shows a lot about his toughness and uh, 
his love for this football team, wanting to get back in so fast. Uh, he made the guy breaks his arm in the Kentucky game, coming up to support a run. And three or four weeks later, he's back on the field, which is unheard of, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, just he wants, he's a competitor and he just loves to be <coughs> around the guys and being out there competing. Can you tell how much pain he's in? I can't, uh, and he won't let you, he won't let you know it. Uh, but I'm sure he's in some pain, some discomfort at least. Just being a local guy have anything to do with coming back earlier or wanting to do more, just really getting what this all means. I think that almost everybody that's here now kind of gets the feel for it, but you know, having been a local guy, Norman knows what Ken Sick was thought of before. So do you think that has anything to do with him coming back so quickly or wanting so bad to be a part of the end of this? I don't know. I can't read his mind. I would say his makeup says that I want to get back in there because I want to get back in there, not so much because he's a, a local guy, but I, I could be wrong. There's a little bit of a team of destiny feel, though, this whole thing, but do you almost have to block that out, too? The destiny? Yeah. Well, that's how, kind of how we started this whole thing uh, way back when. Um, you know, destiny is a predetermined event and uh, our guys have kind of set their minds out in front of them and say this is where we need to be at the end of the year and this is how we're going to get there and it's you know I, I, every once in a while I'll reflect and say man this is this is rocky this is Cinderella in real life this is real life stuff um, but it's it's been a pre pretty amazing season uh, and I'm sure we'll all all the, the whole organization will look back and say wow at the end of this thing uh, been a long time. I wondered if it was after BG or... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You two guys have any thoughts on just the whole, the way this feels right now, kind of the, the journey? Yeah, um, I mean, it's the kind of stuff you dream about as a kid, you know, like laying in bed and playing big games like this and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's been fun to take it all in, but at the same time, we know what we have to do and we're all focused, so we're ready. Completely agree. It's um, I don't know if you can dream up something like this because it's, it's it's incredible to be a part of, and sometimes you just got to sit back and take it all in and realize how blessed you are. But like you said, we got to take it one step at a time. We got to prepare harder than we ever have, but at the same time, we got to prepare the same way we have all year. And we'll be all right. Coach, it's probably not that big of a deal, but is it any different playing in a dome? Because Kent State hasn't played in a dome since I've been here. I love playing in a dome. Or I should say I love coaching in a dome. I, don't, I haven't played in a dome. But uh, especially as a skill guy, there, the, there are no elements in there. The one thing that you have to make sure we do a good job of is uh, hydrating because you can get dehydrated if you haven't experienced that. So we got to do a good job as a team all week long of hydrating. Yeah. That's interesting because if I'm not mistaken, OU's had that problem a couple times. Okay? Yeah. What is that? What, what's that? Well, they're not used to it. I'm sure the air is probably a little bit dry in there, and um, you know, if you haven't hydrated, and all of a sudden it's back to it's, it's camp temperatures at a quarter in, you're probably playing at 80 degree temperatures, and you're not used to it. All of a sudden, your tank's empty, and it's hard to get it back once your tank's empty. All season long, the mantra's been, you know, win the MAC. Either whether well, you're going on the road to Kentucky, on the road to Rutgers, you know, Akron week, it's still been win the MAC. So can all three of you talk about what's, how important it is to be one step away from that goal? It, like I said, it's 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 an incredible opportunity. Um, but like Coach said, it's it's what we've been um, striving for all year. We we said at the beginning of the year, uh, one team, one destiny, and that destiny has been win the MAC. Um, we're all uh, elated to win the MAC East, and we're all so happy to beat Rutgers and beat Army and have all these big wins. But at the same time, each week it's back to ground zero because all we want to do is win the MAC. Yeah, I mean it's what we've been working all year for. Um, you know, all those two days we had, and um, you know, so it's finally here. So we got to be ready to play and come out with a lot of energy and be ready for Northern Illinois. I think when you when you each program that starts the season, the 120, however many plan Division One football, start their season. They set a set of goals for themselves uh, to accomplish this or to accomplish that, and we all feel the same. Every single team feels the same. If you don't, there's something wrong. Uh, but you all feel the same that you got a chance. 
before you play a game. And to, be act to, to actually be able to realize that goal, now that we're in week 13 of the season, is something very rewarding of itself. So uh, it's uh, be quite an accomplishment for us to, uh, to be able to do this, what we set out to do. Who came up with that one team, one destiny thing? Is that you? Yes. Do you have shirts with it on it? or We do. T-shirts? Yes. Everybody wear them in the weight room? Or? Um, we, do you wear we, we, uh, it's just a T-shirt. <laughs> Obviously, it's it's our our motto, but um, we don't wear it at a specific time or, or any other. It's probably worn out by now. <laughs> Coach, you were saying that Andrew could be a problem. Are you like, talking to the trainers or talking to, to the team like, hey, yeah, we, we addressed it last night, and we'll continue to address it throughout the week about you know, just every time you have a chance, just keep sipping on some water and Gatorade and make sure we store up. That's all part of the whole picture. I mean, people don't think about those things. They think about Dre running or these guys blocking, but that's all part of winning games. That's all part of the formula. Do you have any history with their coach? Um, no, uh, he played. He coached at Wisconsin. I coached at Ohio State. That's our history. Uh, he's a very good guy. We've been at coaches' meetings together. I, I really like him. Uh, I think he's a down-to-earth guy, and you know, uh, it's, it's interesting. When we played up there last year, and, and we weren't doing so well, and they were. Uh, he called the dogs off, and uh, I thanked him uh, at the end of the game when we shook hands because they could have run it up on us, and he didn't. Uh, so I got a lot of respect for him for that. Anything in his personality would kind of give you any idea what he may try to do in a game like this? Uh, you speculate, but I mean, he's pretty close to the best type of guy. He's got, he knows he has a good football team, um, and I'm sure he feels very comfortable with the things that they're doing in all three phases. So I don't think he's going to go crazy and do anything that we don't see on film. Anybody uh, reaching out to you, like text or like phone call, like big names, just like wishing you luck for uh, Friday's game? Uh, I get my normal text that I get every week from guys that I've worked with before, and uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, Tress, my no normal text from Tress. <laughs> Anything else? Seems to me that like. Up, building up to the, all these weeks, it was easier to focus on your next game in a way because you guys were underdogs and everybody would kind of see what you were doing, but uh, just kind of going out and still kind of safe. But now that really whole dynamic has changed, and now there's this all this pressure and all this attention on this one game. Has it? Do you feel like as much as you want to try to still have this routine of what you've been doing all these other games, that just because the pressure has ratcheted up a bit, that that changes anything? Or do you have, finding yourself having to block more out? I mean, everybody wants to talk about coaching changes and bowl games, and you know, you're still saying, "Hey, we still got one game to to win." <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's it's a it's a big game. We all know that. So, um, I think we just need to come out and treat it like any other game we've been playing. You know, we Bowling Green was a big game, so I feel like we stepped in, up to that challenge. And you know, this game is a little bigger, so we need to come out and be ready. I completely agree. I think uh, I, don't th I think if you start changing stuff, then then guys start wondering because uh, a lot of guys are pretty superstitious. If you start start changing stuff, it's guys get nervous. I think you you just got to keep doing what you're doing because that's what got us to this point. And um, I was always taught in high school that, that you just you show up on game day and you play whoever decides to show up on the field. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter who they have. You just you show up and you play your game and you play like like you prepared to play. So we're going to show up Friday, and we're going to do what we know how to do. I think the biggest thing from, from my perspective is to make sure that we're fresh Friday night. And uh, we've practiced for a long time. We've practiced since August. These guys have been going at it well, well before August. And now it comes down to doing the things that you've done all season long, nothing new, but doing them better and being fresh at it. And uh, I think that helps our chances. Have you practice changes before you intend to keep them fresh? Or well, we, you lighten anything? Were you 
lessen some of the periods? Typically, we'll go 18, 19 periods on Tuesday and Wednesday. Last night, we went 16. But, um, and tomorrow, we'll go 19, our normal 19. Now, last night was 16 because uh, it's a day closer to the last time we played, as opposed to typically we'll play on a Saturday. They'll have Sunday and Monday off. But we played on Friday. We had Saturday off, so it's Sunday now. Um, so we backed off three periods. Um, but we'll practice 19 tomorrow, and then we'll practice our typical 15. But it's a very quick whistle uh, to make sure bodies aren't getting tangled up and uh, guys aren't leaning on each other for as long as they have to. So it's. Uh, another way of keeping them fresh. I don't know if you heard they said on the broadcast this last one about how they should market your hat. <laughs> I, I did not hear that. I did not hear that. Yeah, so much had the same hat. Oh, did he? Look at the pictures. They had the same Did he? No, I, don't, I was just they stealing your hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good idea. Did you find out how Eric got your number? Uh, we got the text, and he said he uh, he said he got it from a friend of a friend. He's <laughs> he's friend he's at going to school at OSU, and it's just a small world. Right. <laughs> um, he he went to a high school down the road for me. I, th I thought he moved away because last time I saw him, like I said, it was fifth grade, and uh, and I didn't know right away that the last time I saw him was fifth Where did grade. He, go to high school? he went to Central Crossing, uh, another high school in Columbus. Oh, okay. um, like I said, it's just a small world. He, he goes to OSU. He, you know, he's been watching watching the games and stuff. So, Eric with the C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.